men believe in women yes and you hand over your home your children your meals your peace of mind to your wife and you believe that she's a homemaker don't you think that society will fare better exactly if you put community in her hands oh. and men have to recognize and actually agree guys we have tried and we have not been fantastic and allow those women and we're going get together there. That's the thing. Give Nigerian women 20%. Let the companies meet the 35% affirmative action. Nigeria will surpass Rwanda in five years. Nigeria, like many other nations, faces a significant gender disparity in political representation and decision-making across all levels. Women who make up half of the country's population are often underrepresented in positions of power and leadership. Welcome to the Leading Woman Show Governance Series, brought to you by our sponsors, the National Endowment for Democracy and Luminate. My name is Abosede Jodagan, and today we will discuss quarters work and women count. Nigeria has made significant progress in implementing gender quotas to promote women's involvement in leadership, particularly in the private sector and especially in financial institutions. Now this progress demonstrates the potential of gender quotas as a catalyst for increasing women's participation and representation in leadership roles. Now joining us today in the studio to discuss this topic, we have our guests. We have in the studio with us today, Ms. Chukunonso Oni Eze. She's the CEO of Assist to Sell, a leading discount real estate company. And she also served as the 2023 Wimbiz Advocacy Chair. Our next guest is Ms. Kende Ayeni, the Executive Director at Leap Africa, whose experience spans across organizational leadership, operations, and communication. And our final guest is Adenike Oyetunde, the founder of Amputee's United Initiative and the Gratitude Hub. Adenike served as the senior special assistant on persons with disability to the Lagos State Governor, Babajide Songwolu. Now with these lineup of guests, I'm sure you cannot wait to dive into the conversation. So we'll take a short break and we'll continue when we get back. Welcome back to the show. We have our guests in the studio, and today we're going to be talking about quarters work and women count. So, I want to start with Kende. Let me start with you. Okay. Are you for or against quarters? That's a big question, mm. and I feel hesitant to say yes or no <laughs> immediately without giving some context. Mm. I think that we need to understand the purpose for quarters mm. and why. Mm. Um, the European International Institute of Gender Equality mm. has said something about the definition of the quota system for women. Right. And that's basically saying that there needs to be a proportion, allocated number of, of seats for women to ensure there's participation mm. and representation. Right. And because of that, it's important to also identify the why. Mm. If you do not have the voices of women, in some rooms, in some situations, and their perspective, because they are a unique breed, or even when you think about gender parity, you're also speaking about men or women. Yes. And so there's a need to have a balance in the world. Right. You need to have balance in the system. And that's why you need to understand that the more you exclude one of the genders in the room, then there's 
trouble in the universe. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. So Adenike, for or against quotas? I will go the same way she went. It's very difficult to say yes, and also very difficult to say no. Mm. And I'll start with the no. I, I, the proponents for mm. say that um, in experience, you find out that the, ha, the quality of women mm. who get to occupy these places eventually do not pan out to be the very best. Mm. Because it just feels like a form of tokenism. Mm. And for that reason, I will not be in support. Right. However, um, on the other hand, it just increases everything. It gives us more. More women in the room means more for social justice. Right. More women in the room means more in education. That's more right. women in the room means more for health care. More women in the room, especially women like myself, who have one form of disability or the other, makes it even more relatable. Mm. You're beginning to look at, well, how come nobody thought about this? Why mm. didn't we ever think of, oh my goodness, you hear, you see a mother that has a special needs child. You can immediately connect with mm. her pain. Mm. And then when policy is being made, you can see that, okay, I think this woman will make sound policy, be a sound policy maker. Let's ensure that she gets into the space. Mm. So in that light, I am, yeah. some might want to wonder, doesn't the, um, yes, outweigh the nose. Mm. The reality about it is I think they're equally somehow on a balance of some sort. So because of that, I might say that on a per person basis or mm. on a per case basis, will right. I actually say where I stand when it comes to gender quotas. That's so interesting. What would you say? I'm for gender quotas. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Boldly. <laughs> and where am I for gender quotas? Historically, mm. I believe that gender quotas will address the historic underrepresentation that had been meted on women mm. over the years, mm. centuries, not just in Nigeria, mm. but even abroad. Mm. And quota is not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Because even in Nigeria, we used to have the Federal Character Commission. Mm. And what was the mandate of the Federal Character Commission? To ensure. Mm -hmm. That whether you came from the north or you came from the south, any part of the country, You're they had somebody on the set that they were equally represented. Even in the federal colleges that have now become uni unity colleges, mm. they have quota system. Yes. So every nation that has suffered some level of some part of the nation not being equally represented. Mm had always had to fall back on quota system. Mm. The fact that we're now talking about quota in relation to gender mm. does not change the need to use quota to address any imbalance wherever you find it. Right. For women, increasingly, world population, not just in Nigeria, for some reason, God is creating more women than men. <laughs> and women are unique. We are unique in our own creation. A woman is dealing with more. Mm. A woman is expected to do more. Mm. A woman gives more just by nature of our physiological factors. Mm. So I feel that because of those other expectations that a woman has to deal with, yeah. she often finds herself at the back room. Marginalized. Yes. So because we've been at the back room, and now more women are trying to come up, more women have been trained, educated, learned, that can now step forward, that they should be given opportunities. I no longer agree that female gender or female quota is now tokenism. No. Mm. What I have found over the course of doing advocacy for women is that most organizations that want the right women don't know where to find them. Hmm. And that's why the Market Women Association became a very strong force. Because you rarely see where women are grouped professional women. Right. It's either it is the market women that have organized themselves or you find them in the churches. Hmm. Whether yeah. it's the CWO or the Women's Guild. Right. So most of these organizations it's not only men that build companies or corporations. Women also build. 
but they are not organized. It's but they're not seeing. organized. And so therefore it's difficult when you are to then find them. looking for them yes. to find them. Now, most companies now, in following up with the affirmative quota to have 35%, when, when I went on advocacy, I found companies asking me, yes, our directors will be retiring. We're actually looking at bringing more women. We don't know where to find them. Mm. That's why you see some Nigerian women who are on the boards. They are on different boards. It's, mm. it's as if they are being recycled. recycled. It's because they don't know where to find. Not because we don't have enough trained women. Mm. That's, that's very interesting. And I'm, I'm, I'm you know, Kendi, you're, you're hearing that. What are, you, what are you hearing? Like, we don't have, like, we don't know where to find the yeah. women, but we're 50% of the population. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, where are they hiding? Exactly. Uh, yes. I would love to even know if she could, you know, help us understand why they couldn't find the women. Mm. Or is that, that an excuse, for example? Exactly, because you have technology. Mm. So Find anybody anywhere in the world. LinkedIn, you so, know, if they have accounts, for example, or do they do not work? have so accounts? Nominations still work. Systems. What happens is that for such entities and companies, whether they are quoted on the stock exchange or not, mm -hmm. there are certain criteria that they look for when they are shopping for a director. Mm -hmm. Whether it's in a, a non-independent uh, director or it's even capacity. in an executive director capacity. Yes. So there are certain criteria. There are a, there's an age. There is the qualification, there is the past experience, mm -hmm. there is the uh, wherever the tribe. They have all those uh, criteria that they are looking for. Mm -hmm. So what they had not had access to over the years is the cleansed database mm. where a you, a you, a you, a you, a she, a she, a she isn't. That when you come in and you plug it, right. you can find it. Right. So you can find the woman, you can find your she. So what has happened is that one of company identifies one. They spotlight that one. And they spotlight it. And everybody exactly. goes so for her. Gravitates okay. towards. But now that certain organizations have started to put those women together. In a database. Train them. Mm -hmm. So women are now going for trainings to be board ready. Mm. That's right. That's true. So mm -hmm. they now have... Uh, whether it's with the Lagos Business School, yes. whether it's with the... IODs. Yes. So they're now training them. They're going to IODs. They're now showing up. Mm -hmm. Not just women, even the youths. Mm -hmm. Even yes. IOD now has the youth directors. Mm -hmm. And they began to train them. Right. Okay. So now we now have more women who are now trained, who are board ready, who are ready. And Positions. when we go to organizations mm -hmm. where they have already had women who have grown through the ranks, mm -hmm. you may have grown through the ranks... You may have qualified, have the, but you don't, you're not yet board ready right. because you haven't been trained yes. on the side of the corporate governance. Yes. We even encourage these companies to send them for training so that there is no factor militating against the shame them that is qualified from on. sitting at the table. Right, so thank you so much for that. Um, so, Kenny, mm -hmm. you know, we, we know there are challenges with quotas and, and we've sort of started to highlight some of them. Um, but you know, Nonsoto has now made a case that look, it's and you know what I really liked about what you said is we're trying to balance an imbalance, yeah, and that's what we must recognize. Yeah. So there is already a disadvantage, yeah. and that's why some people, and I'm actually one of those people, who says, let us get women in there. Yep. I don't care. Yep. She's female. Okay. Let her enter. True. The same way we have plenty. Male mm -hmm. that are not necessarily of quality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's a numbers game there. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what I really like. And that's why we said quotas work, women count. Yeah. Because women, as a matter of fact, the today's statistics say women are 52% in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. But then you can't have 4.1% on mm -hmm. the highest level of okay. leadership. There's a problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's an imbalance, yeah. right? So quotas are then introduced as instruments okay. to balance that out. So what are some of the advantages of quotas and maybe also the criticisms mm. which you've started to talk about? Mm. But then how can we start to infuse what balances that out? Because, you know, as Adenike said, major challenge, people are worried about quality. Mm. And then for women who are already disadvantaged, we're like, don't go and put somebody who is not qualified, that when they fail, they'll say, you see, that's why we don't give women. Mm. That is the risk. So what would you say? Um, there is a fantastic case 
of Rwanda. Mm. In 2003, um, for first of all, President Kagame is well loved now, um, but it took a lot of progress um, changes in the country to get to that point where Rwanda is an example and a case study I'm going to cite today. In 2003, there was a constitution that was signed mm -hmm. about the quota system that will allow about a, a certain percentage of women, I think about 30, they were aiming for 30% representation across leadership roles, state governments, um, to the national levels. Um, they achieved 23%. By the time they got to 2013, that number moved to 45%, I believe. And I think shortly after that, it shot up to 64%. Rwanda achieved one of the highest number of female representation at that kind of level. Well, they are the highest in the world, in the world today. World today. Yeah. That is a use case mm. of how cultures work yeah. and how it serves and benefits people. Absolutely. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think we can talk too much about how how it's working mm. because we can see it happen. Yeah. Can we talk about why it's not working here yet? Exactly. Because um, when you think about the number of people that are female that ran in the last election, about 15,000 candidates, 10% yeah. were women. Mm. So if we are not running, if we are not there, yeah. if we've been disqualified by certain criteria, mm. then we need to check that. Absolutely. So can we begin to think about changing those frameworks that limit women representation and opportunities to even get into the space. You are saying, let them get there. But there are many things that push women out. Mm -hmm. And we start from there. Can we look at that? I think another um, example is Senegal. Yes. Senegal um, also has a law of parity that was signed in 2010. Mm -hmm. We're talking about 13 years ago. If you visit Senegal today, they have progressed because of such. Can we have something like that? Yeah. Law of parity, which also says that, let us have a law that allows gender parity, balance 50-50. Can we get there? We are so far away mm -hmm. from that reality with this number of percentage, 3% in the Senate for women right now, 4% yeah. as out of us of representatives. It's, 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 we're, it's not it's yeah. we're not there. It's abysmal. Adenike, what would you add to that? What you said earlier was um, women count mm. at the end of the day. And I'm of that school of thought. Mm. When you go to the field, and by field I mean the political space, yeah. the common denominating issue that women face, family lifestyle. You, know, you see the guys very well able to stay out midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m. Mm. By 6 50, she's excusing herself, mm. having to either look at her phone to watch the CCTV from home or calling to ensuring that the homework has been done. Mm. Um, I don't see the men do that. At 9 p.m., you see the men calling home, calling their partners. Hey, how was your day? How are they? They're well. Okay, see you guys. Um, we have a cultural bias that may be difficult to break when it comes to the realism of women who now say, you know what, I have a partner who's supportive and has said, go. Mm. I will put more at the home front. Then you begin to look at, what will mama say? Has the church accepted it? What will my friends say? What will my friends say? <laughs> call me a bad mother. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because the men who do this, if you go to find out, very many of them are actually equally present fathers. Let's be honest with ourselves. Mm. Because the ag argument is usually, if, it's, yeah, if you yeah, take absolutely. it away, you, if your children will suffer. Many of these men are equally present fathers. So how about we start to encourage ourselves, create a system that works? Yeah. You may not be there when they get home. Mm. You may be there in the morning when they're heading out for school. Yeah. You may not be able to do the school drop-off because you're trying to also just get a late morning start. But you will find your rhythm. If you can actually stop at school, at the end of school, before they go to their extra classes, you can do that pick up and drop off. We need to encourage more women. Get your sisters, your, your cousins, people you trust into your home system. Mm. If you have mothers that you trust or mother-in-law that you trust, bring them or into the- Or father-in-laws too. Honestly speaking, 
create that system <laughs> that works. Yes. 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 Create the system the that of, works. Before the days of because, abuse, and I acknowledge exactly. that concern. Okay. You know, yes. we need to create the systems that work. Yes. When you say work-life balance, it's a, there's such a divide. It's possible, it's not possible. Whatever it is, what matters most is, I see it. The male colleagues take it back. Their home is like... No inhibition. None. So there. That's the best... Best, best description. On the other hand, I'm also conflicted. Women are have the higher earning power now. Women are getting more degrees now. Women are so truly, how come the people that are getting into the space are either coming out and we are here, you're not qualified. Is the system really the one disqualifying them or are they the ones not actually fit? I have seen better fit women in different places that have gone into amazing roles. I have friends who have just been appointed into different places and the challenges are so daunting, but you can tell that the charisma that these people have built through the years will make them stand out irrespective of the issues. So the reality on ground is, it's great, mm. but I also want to fall back on the change that we seek to see starts from the home front. Mm. We cannot, we, and I, I'm particularly emphasizing because of the age of the audience, you, we cannot talk about these conversations away from what's playing out at the home front. Mm. You cannot say that you are trying to create a balance or create, go for it, and then you and your partner, where your children are watching our loggerheads, your yes. children will tell you categorically, I will want to face my nine to five. I will want to be a stay at home, whether it's a female or, because it has a lasting impact on the children and we don't see these things. So you now see your children having to go through therapy and try to do and learn because of all the drama that played out that we, the adults couldn't navigate properly. Mm. So a lot of the conversation starts from the home. Secondly, religious institutions. We cannot take away from the fact that it plays such a vital role. And I'm Christian. There are many things in the Bible that were cultural than religious, and somehow we have failed to the divide. So the lines have become so blurred, and it's almost impossible for women to even function in religious spaces because, no, it's not a woman's role. No, women are not supposed to do this. Women are supposed. We see it translate on the outside, in the political space. So once you demean her, you reduce her. Explain to me how easy you think it will be for her to walk into that ballroom with her head high up. It, it, she, some of them will still do so. It's like there are different domains in society. So many domains. And then you're battering her in this domain and that domain. And then all of a sudden, she's supposed to show up as this superwoman. I said, I want to come to you. Nigeria has plenty of women. Right? <laughs> and even based on what you were saying, there are plenty solid women. Bam. How can we turn this number? This question this is question. <laughs> I want to do a PhD on it. How can we turn numbers into power? Mm. There are two major things. Mm. First of all, let's realize and recognize that politics is said to be a dirty game. Mm. No, but who said it? No, I'm coming. Who said it? Because that's it's why been, good people are not there, going It's been in. there before we came. <laughs> and somebody had said that politics is a blood spot. Mm. Mm. Not a lot of women want to be associated with dirt hmm. and blood. Which is why I because question of our, the branding Because of, of our upbringing and culture. Number two, to do politics, you need to be able to muzzle the money. Politics requires money. Mm -hmm. Women are not financially savvy. Yeah. We cannot raise money. We are not good at raising money. Three, there is the mischief from the men. <laughs> Where the they want mischief. to keep their wives at home to be homemakers. <laughs> when a man wants his wife to be in politics, she will be in politics. Mm. And I have seen politics grow on the wives of those who have worked the corridors of power. Yeah. Senator Reti Kingigbe yeah. is the wife of the one-time vice presidential candidate. Alaji Babagana Kingigbe. And today, she's the senator president yep. in the FCT. Yep. Where did she pick it up from? Yep. Let, there was also a woman senator, uh, Fatima Rasaki, Raji Rasaki's wife, former governor of Lagos State. Mm -hmm. Where did she come from? You see the women who are in politics, either they were born into a political family, 
marry into politics. Or well they marry married into politics. Yep. Their husbands can help them, or their fathers will support them yep. to muscle the money. I am a proponent that if women want to go into politics, there are two stages of a woman's life when you can go into politics. We're, we're Before notes. marriage yes. and when the children go away to school. Yep. Girl, the I period of the time. You need to explain to us. We don't understand. The period of this, the we are not in either <laughs> category. We, the, are, we are in the middle. The period of the time. Yes. When a woman is building a home, mm. making babies, nurturing a home, is not primarily anybody that is holding her back. Mm. Nature yeah. is holding her back. So, so because explain, naturally, the man is he being held back at that same no, time? No, hold on, hold on. Most women will not go on a political campaign yep. carrying pregnancy yep. for fear they don't want to you lose want the to pregnancy. That's nature. Mm. When what a about woman, when, when a woman, out? when the baby is out, mm. the mother's instinct to nurture mm. till the baby is has some one level of old, independence. Yes. In the, uh, independence doesn't come at one year old. You see most mothers letting go when they are sure that the child can speak and tell me when something is wrong. So, so, so when you begin to look at the ages at which they began to get into political offices, yes. you see them either prior marriage yes. or, or later when in life. later. But when they but, feel no, that they have done this, family. This, this conversation is sweet to me. <laughs> but the country is rotting in mm. the middle of that time. Mm. And that well, is what I want so to So the home front is good. Mm. We're raising good children. That's your one. That's your two. That's your that three. Yeah. This is what I say to men, Bosse. If men believe in women, yes. and you hand over your home, your children, your meals, your peace of mind mm. to your wife, right. and you believe that she's a homemaker, don't you think that society will fare better? Exactly. If you put community in her hands. Oh. So please hold that thought. We'll go on a short break and we'll continue this delicious conversation where we It's delicious. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. We're still talking quarters work and women okay. counts. Now, before we went on a break, we were discussing the complexity of a woman getting into a terrain like politics mm. in certain times of her life. Mm. And my question to you was, what are the, our male counterparts doing? And do they have certain times of their life where they also have this constraint? And you were just about to elaborate on that. And then you were also about to talk about what you think should be done. Men don't have this constraint. Mm. Mm. All a man needs to jump into politics is to have a slight nudge. No, boy, you go good for a house, so make you run. You think so? Yeah. You, you sure? Yes, you say, no. oh, oh, boy, we go run him. Yeah. That's all a, a man needs. Yep. And he's ready. Well, we know if he run him as a woman. Mm. So, and he's ready. Okay? And he goes out there, and he has his willing and ready support system. Mm -hmm. And he will boldly walk to his father and say, Daddy, I want to run for local government chairman. I think you have to sell one property to give me money. Mm. The audacity, the yes. boldness. Yes. Then a daughter can walk up to the father easily and say that he won't go and find husband. Mm. Mm. So the society has been structured to expect a woman to do the things that make her a woman first. Yep. 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 So society expects you to marry, mm. go to school, mm. marry, take care of the home. Mm. And it is only when those things that nature endowed you with, and society expects you to do, when you have near accomplished or accomplished them, will the society be ready to allow you look at governance? We have had how many years of poor governance? Mm. Let me not say bad governance, mm. but poor governance. And studies have shown that anywhere you let a woman be in position mm. of leadership, and management. That's true. That's true. That's there true. is more financial prudence. Absolutely. Very few women will buy G wagons for their boyfriends. <laughs> there is more financial prudence. There is more accountability. Yes. There is more corporate governance. 
and more human and development. And more humane yes. face to everything they do. And that is the truth. And the fact is that the family is the nucleus, is the first unit of the greater society. So if she, that is the primary caregiver, can hold the nucleus that produce the people that make the society, she's held back. The society will be held back. I, I appreciate you, I appreciate that thought. But Kenny, Kenny, I mean, I, I can see you nodding in the yeah. not affirmative. <laughs> I, who gave the woman this caregiving responsibility? I have no clue. Primary and then the secondary. I have no clue. Please. I have to elaborate. <laughs> And then I think it will come to you because I know that you are four. <laughs> because I have a different opinion. And I've seen examples yes. of women close to me and those around me who have been able to leave their kids at home from six months and pursue whatever career they want, whether in... And the kids are not in the psychiatry they are, world. They are well-behaved. They have aspirations. They have doing very well. They are in their teenage years now. And one in particular is already about 21. Mm. That was the first example of a woman, of this particular person, I won't drop their name, yeah. um, that has demonstrated that it's actually okay for you to do that. She was supported by her husband. Mm. If I give you a name, you people, you know. Yeah. She was supported by her husband and pursued everything she wanted to pursue. Mm. And so it's possible, home, is what yes, you're saying. It's possible. I think women place themselves under this limitation about the pressure from the environment, the society, and parents, and people, and the church. And it's right. There are people asking these questions. In Nigeria, we don't have boundaries. People mm. ask you all sorts of things. Oh, yes. When are you getting married? Mm. How many kids do you have? Is your body not yet girl? Look. Yeah, how long have you been married? Your waist. They ask you all, this, <laughs> all these very invasive questions about your life. Mm. So we as women need to set boundaries. We need to be sure about it. The other thing that I've seen when it comes to women and men in governance is experience. Mm. Men start early. Mm. What is different for women is they start later in life. As she, as she said. And they don't start later because they want to have kids. Mm -hmm. They don't realize that they want to. That is, it's, you know, it's, it's not a goal for them until... Mm. It's becoming like, actually, I can't do this. By that time, they are 27, 28, or 30. That's when they realize. For some people, and I have another example that I could also share. As for many people who have realized when they were teenagers, mm. they have certain aspirations, they are able to get there and get there quicker. Yeah. The other thing about education is programs like leadership programs prepare you from undergraduate stage. That is the experience. What are you doing in your communities? In the UK, for instance, you cannot be a mayor mm -hmm. if you do not have community yeah. hours experience, experience logged in for years. That's the first criteria. Yeah. It's got nothing to do with your gender. It's got nothing to do with your education. If you haven't done anything in the grassroots, if you have no pain or inflections of the people, you have going nowhere. It's got nothing to do with that. But I hear you about the Western world. It's the same thing in Nigeria. You need experience and education. Mm. Go to leadership programs that tell you, that prepares you for political activism or civic participation. Mm. LIB does that. I'm not trying to market LIB. Mm. That is it. There are many leadership programs in Nigeria, outside Nigeria, that prepares you to be a leader in the political space, right. to be a board member. Yeah. Because when you lead in one sector, you can lead in other sectors as well. Leadership is a concept. Once you know it, you master it, you're there. Mm. You, you get it. So. Um, pivoting is the other thing about it. So experience, education, and pivoting. Right. All of this leads to something. And you see women gradually move from the corporate world into politics, from social development world to politics. I will cite another example of Michelle Obama. I think I saw her, her, her interview uh, talking about when she just had a baby and she was trying to go back to work. And it was on her terms that she was taking that job. Again, when we think about the limitations and the possibility and the potential of it, we need to start with the self. Understanding and breaking olds and limitation, and then every other thing just walk through. I must also add about money. Mm -hmm. She said women cannot mobilize money. Can oh my goodness. Money we for are politics. mobilizing. For politics. Even for politics. 
We're mobilizing for others. We are mobilizing <laughs> money. When you talk about the women um, in the grassroots, and when you go to rallies, how many of those people are women? More. Look at the percentage. They are mobilizing themselves to come to rallies. They are mobilizing themselves it's for the campaigns. It's the same skill set. If they're able to rally for a man, they can rally for a woman if you show up, if you, if you present yourself. And when it comes to money, actual money, there's a new generation of wealthy women yeah. today. Yep. Young people under 30 in Nigeria, yeah. in diaspora with African heritage. Yeah. We have got money. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> There's money. There's money. And then you can. Hmm. You'll be, you'll be writing plenty things. You'll be uh, thinking yes. plenty things. Trust, trust me, I've been writing a lot. <laughs> it's interesting that just this morning, yeah. a very dear friend of mine who is about to have a child, mm. we had this conversation. And my friend tells me, I'm actually now actively praying about getting a different job that gives me more time because of my child on the way. Yeah. And I asked why. And my friend goes... I don't have praying time. Mm. Um, that really stuck with me. This is one person. And the reality of it all comes to bear only when you are actually in that space. Yeah. When you have three children, four children, you have a job to get to, you have a spouse, you have siblings, you have elderly parents who have to go for their medical checkup. All of these things are talking at you. And then you have self-care. Mm -hmm. There we go. You have self-care. So it is actually okay to drop your child off yeah. at three months if you can create a structure. You trust the system. You trust the caregivers. Please, by all means. Emotional. Women are emotive and emotional. Is why we struggle to drop them off. There's something about mom guilt. Social media has also popularized it. So when you travel, you are very okay to buy that one gift for the child because mom guilt, oh, let me buy this for the child. The reality about it is you're buying the gifts, but what you're also telling yourself is, it's actually okay for me to keep feeling guilty. Mm. There is no need for you to keep feeling guilty. You are doing what it is you can do with the resources that you have available so that you can also create a better future for this child and also show the child that the impossibility does, does not, not exist. exist. We are very emotive when it comes to doing, let's get it. Who is this person? How do we interview this person? Because again, there's a trust deficit in the system. Yeah. Your caregivers are likely abusers. Mm. Family members are probable abusers. People have stories for days. Mm. So people are inundated with the, the stark reality of who do I now leave these children with? Mm. And because people feel like you're dispensable, you can say at home, let me be the caregiver. What she said lastly about earning power. We have a generation of women who have a higher earning power than men. So you see more men, eh, are you sure you? My friend and her husband, we asked them recently, why have these guys relocated? And they said point blank, she's earning the FX, even in Nigeria. We can't get the quality of childcare we get here. So we are staying here because we are not gonna get it abroad. The very first of such conversation, I was in awe because it was a husband who was doing most of the talking. I'm like, you guys are different. Never have I seen it, never have I heard it. But I'm sure that it's been a trajectory for them as well. Mm. And the reality, they had to sit down and say, oh, if we go, are you sure? Dropping $1,000 and $1,500 per month is not child's play for anybody, irrespective of what your financial status is. It's a, it's a lot. Yeah. Now, um, relinquishing power and control doesn't come to a lot of us. We, we can relinquish power sometimes in the boardroom at the place of work, but at the home front, we don't want to let go. Mm. Even when we create a system, there are places like the baby lounge that provide these services for people, tell you that we have, we have tried and tested over and over and over again. Bring your kids to us. We can get your kids. We can get people to your homes. We don't want to relinquish the power because I can do it all by myself. Superwoman syndrome. And then we don't support each other. I think that is what ties to Auntie's point about fundraising. Because we will, we will support the man. The man that from secondary school we knew was the dining hall prefect. And suddenly we've lost touch. Yeah, we used to see on social, on Facebook somehow, but now we just found out that he's running for House of Representatives and the old boys, the, the um, old students association, we need to support our own. 
Go and see what happens when there's a woman that comes. Ah, are you sure? Eh? What has she been doing? Mm. Eh? Mm. She was working there. Mm. She, she's sure about this decision. Mm. It's, it's, it's really dirty out there. Oh. Mm. That thing about who defined it, who created the parameters. I watch documentaries a lot, and I see from reality that it is dirty everywhere. Mm -hmm. It is dirty. It has been dirty even before they defined it that it was dirty. And you still see men saying, this debt, uh, we enter. So why is it difficult for us? Why do we struggle to support women? What do women have to prove to women that they are suitable, they are mm. capable, and they are able? We do not trust ourselves well enough. We do not, especially government and governance and leadership. But when it comes to let's do a party, we we'll somehow trust ourselves. We, we, all those fears just disappear. <laughs> Boom. Why? Because our party is soft. It's, 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 it is soft. So the conversation is, to be candid with you, I think we need to speak to ourselves. Mm. Outside of all the parameters, yes, the system doesn't favor us. Yes, things, you know, sometimes I see some of these corruption cases, I'm like, what has she done that they haven't done? You guys, why? Mm. And my cousin, I say, no, I'm not saying that to it's take, right. make a pass at what has happened, but I'm saying that, can't you see that there's actually a bias to, by the media to, consistently emphasize how terrible this person is, how bad this person is. Can we break the issues and can we start to ha handle them one after the other? But we, we picked one of those cases and, you know, my cousin left saying, oh, wow, never have I. I said, yes, there's a systemic, it's whether it's conscious, yeah, whether it's unconscious, conscious. there's a systemic um, method to, in ensuring that everything that surrounds a woman who eventually gets the liver and says, I want to do it, mm. we just... Check. You can mention many names. It's just like, what happened? What happened? We read a book recently last year. She did mention names. She mentioned so many names until date. No, case, no, no suit has been filed. Why? Because I'm sure she actually does have evidence. If you mess with me, I'm going to put it out there. That is one audacious woman who continues to get my respect. Why? Because she has dead authority in the face to say, I haven't done anything wrong. I went in there to put my support. I went in there to give what I know that I can do. And this is what happens. Finally, with government and leadership, mm -hmm. you must give sac it's sacrificial giving. Mm -hmm. How many women are at that point where we're saying, I'm ready to give the sacrifice? We find many of them, and that's why I've noticed tell you, Auntie, Abraham Maslow's needs. Mm -hmm. they, have, they have done this, they have done that, they have done this. We have now got in here. Like David Beckham is building farm in his house. You get to a level where everything, you have accomplished everything. So what can we do? Oh, beehive, great. That is when women now say, ah, I've done all of this, so maybe it's now time I can sacrificially give. They're off to college. In that instance, I see it happen over. You now start to see them get appointments. Oh, this is what it is. It's not that bad. I've got an appointment. Maybe I should now make it a permanent fixture. Because again, there's nothing to lose at that point. I might be wrong. But this is my opinion. No, no, no. I hear you loud and clear. And I mean, you know, going back to the fact that we're talking about gender quotas, but the fact that, look, when we talk about gender quotas and wanting to find that balance, we've now spent time talking about the fact that, look, this balance is not as, it's not balancing <laughs> because there are genuine constraints to the balance just happening. And that really takes us back to the fact that gender quotas is not a silver bullet. Yes. And so, and so what I wanted to talk about is, what are some of the strategies that can complement gender quotas? Such that we don't only have numbers mm -hmm. and maybe just turn numbers into power, but power that does not deliver, for example, mm -hmm. or turn numbers into power, but then it's destructive. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the other things the other ingredients that are needed. Number one, use gender quotas to give women appointive positions, first of all. Mm. Let them break their wings and test their metal by appointments. Mm. She was once uh, an advisor to the Lagos State Government. She had worked in the corridors of power. She's been in government. She has picked up one or two nuances. Mm. She, be, she would have begun to build network and resilience and streetwise. Yes. Women need to be streetwise to yes. play in any of this. So we're at home now, we're not on the street. Yes. <laughs> that is why we're at home. We're not That's on the why I tell you that 
for women to succeed in places like politics, All it bad. is pre-family or post-family. Post -family. When you can run the streets. Hey. That is the truth. Hey. You need to be streetwise. Men are very calculating yeah. and mischievous when it comes to politics. You need to be able to check it. You have to be able to do the meeting before the meeting and the meeting after oh, the meeting. Oh. So, yes, so bad. You, yes, so, you, we must. Nature. And it's only when I have let go mm. and fulfilled mm. what nature and what will give me peace. Peace of mind. Will I be able to turn around and say, hmm, now that I've my children are on their way to independence. I want to make sure that they grow up in a decent society. Mm. That is when I can step out to try to be part of creating a more decent society. Mm. But in the interim, use quota to give more women appointments. Mm. When a woman comes up, there is a position that has come open in an organization. And there is a man and there is a woman and they are equally mm. qualified. qualified. Give it to the woman. Mm. That's what quota is all about. Mm. Even in election, when the base points that the male candidates won is within a certain margin, let the woman take it. Mm. It has to be deliberate. It has to be deliberate. And everywhere I have found women holding political offices, they have done more than the men. Yeah. They so have done evidence, more. Evidence based. The women, they will buy. I had the privilege of knowing one female house of rep that eventually became a senator. And every time I go to visit her, she's either buying jam form for her whole constituency, mm. neko form for her whole constituency, or she's buying Nigerian Defense Academy form for her whole constituency. Mm. So one day I said to her, uh -uh, your mates are buying a G wagon. You are busy, this, this, this. He said, ah, that these are her constituency. There's nothing I didn't see. Keke Marwa, motorcycle, sewing machine. Mm -hmm. And I can actually tell you that when she left office, she wasn't buoyant. Mm. But her community was prosperous. Mm. And when I went with her to her village, and we tried to go to the market to buy, we went to the market to buy, mm. we came back with our bank, so we didn't spend any money. Wow. The love and appreciation of what she did for her people. Wow. We need to invest in the women. It is the women that have the emotion to be able to build a society. Mm. And men have to recognize and actually agree, guys, we have tried and step we have back. not been fantastic. Mm. Can we step back a bit and allow those women and we're going Get together. Yes. That's the thing. That we're is the truth of the matter. Us. If yeah. you believe that she can raise your son, yes. that she can raise your family, yes. and give you sons and children you'll be proud of, huh. why do you think that she cannot do it in the larger society? Mm. The truth is that the men have to cut back on the mischief and the selfishness. Mm. They have to allow their women do more. Awesome. You have to support them. A lot of women are also not trained and they quit and not mentored. Mm. Mentorship and training is key for women. Yeah. Then there is knowledge gap. Yes. A lot of women have not seen what a political form looks like. Mm. And you see what men do, the big weeks, when it's time for election, they buy forms and give their people to go and contest. Maybe we should start buying forms and giving our women to go and contest. Yes. Sit them. down and fill the form for them. Yes. I see communities buying jam form and getting the People teachers to, to help guys. to fill jam form and neko form for their candidates to get into universities. Oh. Why can't we do that? Mm. Why can't we rest? let them go and even contest and let it be that they don't pass? Yeah. Then we women, we need to reorient our minds. Yeah. The fact that Nike is shining does not mean that Bose cannot Come shine. On. We must learn to be less jealous and less envious. Lord. We must learn to support our gender. Lord. If we don't toot our horn, nobody will toot it for us. Let the woman go. Yes. Let the woman do what? Go. go. Let her go.
That yeah. is the stage we are in now. Yes. That's what our nation needs. Yes. That's what the world needs. Mm. Let more women Go. come to the front platform. Yeah. 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 It is not just all about the other room. Come to the front <laughs> platform. <now. laughs> okay. And we have shown that women can multitask. Yes. Okay. They can. Yes. yes. And let's support more women. And we will get there. And I believe that with more women in leadership, yeah. more women in management, mm. more women in politics, give Nigerian women 20%. Mm. 20%. Mm. Let the companies meet the 35% affirmative action. Nigeria will, suppose, will surpass Rwanda in mm. five years mm. because Nigerians are unique in yes. the world. That's yes. right. Awesome. Well, we're wrapping up this conversation, but Kenny, I want to give you the last word on this one. What would you say about everything that we've said here today? Right. I agree with you on many of the things you've said. I just want to flag a few things within that context, and that is corruption and Godfather reason. Mm -hmm. As much as you have elaborated on, you know, men buying firms for men and sponsoring them today, it's because of the kickback and what will happen. Mm -hmm. Loyalty, false loyalty as well. That is what is going to happen when we continue to promote these sort of activities by men. But we have to also be very clear on on the person whose the heart fits should be wearing it mm. more than anything else. That for me would allow us to go a long way in ensuring that the right people have the right seat in the right space and in the right time because um, they're moving train. And it's important that we balance all of that. Um, and when you also think about the fatherism and corruption, they are very linked, you know. Um, corruption is the reason we are talking about poor governance, like you said, in Nigeria. And if we do not break the old of corruption by teaching it early to, and you also talked about greed and patriotism and all of these things, you need to be teaching moral values mm. in the classroom. I'm not sure what the civic education looks like mm. in reality, but moral ethics, transparency, integrity, honesty, these are things that should be counting in many quarters um, from primary to secondary to tertiary, because by the time you're fully formed, it's hard to break such characters, much more so, which is why you have a lot of selfish, manipulative, greedy men um, that we have today. And women can also play the game. Women are manipulative. <laughs> they just choose to be manipulative in their own circumstances. And so I think women have the power to will. We just have to direct our power to the right place, mm -hmm. our energies to the right places, and, and be sure about our goal uh, and the intentions behind some of these things. I think also, uh, I'll speak to allyship. When you talked about letting the woman go, you're already invariably speaking to this already. You only need one man. And I think there are two or three examples of this. I, I'm not able to cite the examples now, but one man can change a country. Mm. One man can change an institution. You need only one man. When you have the right person and then everything moves from there. And so we need more allies, men, as much as we need women to support women, to sponsor women, to give room to women, to advocate for women. Because I think that the, the ministry is not advocating for women. What is it that the Ministry of Women Affairs is doing? Can we examine their mandates properly? Can they include advocacy at all state levels to ensure that there, there is advocacy for women um, counting in the corridors of power, in governance, and in, in even across the mainstreams. Um, and then the responsibility of who? And I think you already alluded to that somewhat. So it's a core shared responsibility of the government, of the people, of the society, of families, of parents, so many people in the ecosystem. So many actors. So many actors, yeah. Brilliant. Well, I mean, today's conversation has been so enlightening and reaching. And I hope that you have realized the power of quarters, you know, um, to transform society and to bring about an inclusive governance, especially in Nigeria. We're in desperate mm -hmm. need of it at this point. Um, and we want to just appreciate our guests. But before we thank them officially, we will go on a short break. And when we get back, we'll go into our gaming segment called Miss Representative. Welcome back. It's time for Misrepresented, our gaming segment. On today's segment, 
our representatives will list out top female leaders in Nigeria. Representing team A and B are Udoka and Treasure. Now, question one, list three top female CEOs in Nigeria. Let's start with team A. Fatu, Fatu, Abiola Laswo, Anibasi, Anibasi, and that's in turn. Thank you. Team B. No. Um, number one, we have Stella Shingedu Okiri. She is the CEO of Emzo Paracetamol Company. The second one, we have Yemsi Endo. She is the CEO of First Momentum Bank of Nigeria. The third one, we have Alima Abuba. She is the CEO of SunTrust Bank of Nigeria. Please give a round of applause to Team B. Now, question two. List three top female presidents. Let's start with team A. Viju. Viju something. Just tell us the country. Okay. okay. Um, she was the first female president in Liberia. Liberia. And second one is she was first president at Scova in Ethiopia. Okay. And third one, um, Washington, Washington D.C. Mm. And that was. Let's see, but I can't. I can't. Thank you, can't. Team B. We have Laura Shinshinra, the president of Costa Rica. We have Tajer Aloni, the president of Finland. And we have Dilma Rousseff, the president of Brazil. Please give Team B a round of applause. Now, on this note, We'd like to thank our distinguished guests for joining us in the studio today. We'd like to thank Ms. Chukunonso Onye Eze. We'd like to thank Ms. Kende Ayeni and Ms. Adenike Oyetunde. We appreciate you for being a part of today's episode. And of course, to our live audience, you have been simply amazing. To our viewers watching today's episode, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us across all social media platforms at Will & Global. Please like, share, and leave us a comment. And until next time, remember, women's leadership can change everything, everywhere. See you next week. <laughs>